y'all we are back here myself born coach born pastor born whatever you want to call me we are here with randall the advisor academic advisor we are here with paul the maestro and we are ready to get in another edition of young black america so uh, we want to real quick immediately jump into this topic y'all saw well hopefully y'all saw it. if y'all didn't i'm gonna play it right now look how much African-American communities have suffered under democratic control. To those I say the following, what do you have to lose by trying something new like Trump? What do you have to lose? I say it again, what do you have to lose? Look, what do you have to lose? You're living in poverty, your schools are no good, you have no jobs, 58% of your youth is unemployed. What the hell do you have to lose? And at the end of four years, I guarantee you that I will get over 95% of the African American vote. I promise you. Okay, boom. So y'all saw it. Trump's comments to black America. I know some of you all saw it. I saw the comments that he had in his speech last week, and I wanted us to discuss some of what we saw. Um, did you all get to see it? You know, I didn't actually see the actual video, but I saw a little bit about it and uh, heard some of the reactions to it. Okay. All right. So, you saw it. Yeah. I saw Anything it. that I, I wrote down some stuff that he said, and we can uh, even get, get into it piece by piece, but in general, what did your perspective? Uh, to be honest with you, man, I, I was offended. Mm. I, I was offended. Mm. Um, you know, and I know we'll get into details, mm. but, you know, it, it was just kind of like he was speaking as if he knew really what was going on in, in our community. Um, like he's been there. Um, you know, like he could actually empathize with what was going on. It sounded more like he was saying, you know, uh, y'all scum of the earth. I mean, what else can you do? Can you do this, right? Like, you know, you need, you need a white savior to come in and, and and swoop in and save mm -hmm. the day, right? Um, so I, I'll leave it at that, but I mean, I, I was offended to be honest. Yo, literally, I couldn't help when I watched it the first time and the second time, yo, I couldn't help but laugh. Mm -hmm. You know, like the, the first thing, like, immediately, like I, as soon as I heard him say, I was like, <laughs> like, like, I was dying laughing. I was like, yo, how can somebody be so, um, arrogant or so out of touch or so unkind to people that they allegedly want to reach and I think his ability to do that however I think he doesn't realize how much that shows the position that he's in as opposed to the type of position that most black, black people find themselves in because um, he, he is in a position to where he is able to the ignorance of the challenges that we go through. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, not only is he white, and I'm not that, not to say that white folks don't have their own struggles, right? Everybody goes through struggles, right? But he's in a position in our country of privilege. On top of that, he's wealthy, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, <clears throat> and a white man. So, you know, it astronomically, to, to, it's, it's almost like when he speaks, it's like th there's nothing that can ever happen to me because of the things that I say or what have you. Because, and I don't mean happen in terms of violence or what have you, but it's like I'm too big to be touched. I'm too big for anybody to come against me or say anything, right? And I'm just like, yo, like most of us, like we couldn't just go about treating people like that and just be okay. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I mean, honestly. I wasn't surprised. I'm never. I'm not surprised anymore. Oh, anything yeah, that he says. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. I, I, you're, you're absolutely right. Because the thing is, that's exactly his entire campaign. Mm -hmm. like, he's come from that position where he just says whatever he wants, mm -hmm. and there's no. He's never afraid of any repercussions or any. You know, what I'm saying anything, uh, any 
backlash that he might receive from the comments that he makes. And like you said, I mean, there are kind of two issues generally, you know, in our country. There's one of race, you know, black versus white, but there's also wealthy and poor. Mm -hmm. And he's he fits both of those demographics. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? He's white and he's wealthy. Mm -hmm. So for him, I almost feel like somebody just told him, you know, they were looking at the polls, they see how low he is with the minorities. So mm -hmm. somebody was just like, well, make an appeal to them and see what happens. And, and they probably the asked him the question, well, what do you have to lose <laughs> by, <laughs> right. by, uh, right. by right. making that appeal? And the reason why I said, use that phrase, what do you have to lose? Because for those of you, as you just saw hopefully in the video, so I, I'll, I'll, I'll this, the main points that I got from that little part of the speech. So he says, what do you have to lose, right? And then he says, your schools are in poverty, right? And, and he starts it off by saying that the Democratic uh, Party has not positioned us, in, put us in a better position, so why vote for the Democratic Party? Now, when I look at that, he said, your schools are in poverty, you have no jobs, as if like none of us are working, 58% of your youth are unemployed, and I was watching the Young Turks, and they did make mention like, well, he's considering like the age group of 16 to 19, which most of them wouldn't be employed yeah. no matter what race you're talking about. Yeah. And then he, the part that really made me mad though was when he was like, he guarantees that 95% of African American vote will go to him in 40 years, and I'm like, what is this guy talking about? But my thing was this, but by all means, I think he's actually kind of right. The Democratic Party has not necessarily given us anything to say, wow, we should be like overtly voting for them. Matter of fact, I've had to consider like the Green Party, you know what I'm saying, and all these other parties who nobody even know about, most of America don't even know about, right? But what has the Republican Party done for us in the past, at least in, in, in my lifetime? You know what I'm saying? Like, like I, I'm to the point where I don't feel like I don't rely on a political party for my life. I don't know if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Because I don't feel like politicians do much, period. You know, and I'm not saying that there aren't some that don't try, but I just feel like there's so much red tape. Um, and matter of fact, I have a follow-up question to this, and we might even have to do a whole segment on that one day, but, but, um, but I just don't feel like any politicians right now, at least of the two major parties, are doing anything that significantly impact my life as born Eddie. Mm -hmm. And let's, well, let's talk about that for a little bit because oh, you could have come. You I think I that, that uh, yeah, so we're born. I'm talking. So <laughs> the thing is that, uh, <laughs> no, I agree. I think that it's important that people don't necessarily vote just according to party lines. Right. I do think that's something mm -hmm. to really think about. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. I think that you should really approach each candidate for what they offer, you know, what they say. They can but can I ask you a question? Yeah. What if you feel like, what if you feel like you have, let's say, the Green Party, you have another party, I forgot what the other one is that I want to say. Libertarian or, or independent also, right? Mm -hmm. You have these other parties that you really do not realistically think that they can win. Yeah. Right? And I know that's Mark Lamont Hill was talking yeah. about that. That's what I was, I was right? looking for. What, what, right. what do you, what do y'all think? We know what Mark thinks, right? Yeah. What do y'all think? You know, personally, it, it, should you vote for the lesser of the two evils of the major parties, or should you? Do you think that you should just take a stand, even though you know they're going to lose, and vote for one of these smaller parties? The thing is that if everybody thinks that the smaller parties won't win, mm -hmm. then nobody will ever vote. For it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, mm -hmm. I think if everybody has that mentality, that's why they never win because mm -hmm. everybody keeps thinking that they never win. But the thing is, even though they offer the better candidates potentially, but. Do you vote for them knowing that? Because I understand what you're saying. Because, but if you, because if, if you vote that for them, then you're, you're taking it, away yeah, votes for yeah, potentially yeah. win and, and that's more the, votes. That, that. That's the that's the catch twenty two. I think you know from my perspective. I don't. I, there's no right or wrong, obviously, but yeah. it's just things to consider for those of you who may not have thought about those things. Like you know, what what goes your head, man? Yeah. So I mean, that's a, that's a tough question. Mm -hmm. um, I, I would venture to say that you. Vote with, with your conscience, so mm -hmm. to speak, but mm -hmm. but it needs to be an informed, mm -hmm. right? Not an emotional decision, mm -hmm. right? So I think emotionally, um, you know, out of fear, out of whatever hatred, prejudice, uh, you know, we tend to side with one party or, or, or the other, right? But voting with your conscience to me uh, means that you're making an informed decision based on the issues and the concerns.
consistency that each candidate kind of uh, demonstrated throughout, throughout, you know what I mean, their, their political uh, careers, um, and then going with that. You know, I, I don't think we need to subscribe automatically to one way or the other, but what I think also is that we need to be as um, involved and engaged on a local level as we are through kind of at that executive level. Right, and I, I've, I've been even saying and admit myself personally, um, I'm not fully aware of, you know, uh, the people in, in, in power at a local level mm -hmm. um, as I am uh, kind of consumed by this uh, kind of presidential um, election. Right. Uh, but that's one thing I want to make sure that I'm taking steps to do because really there's a lot of power that, that like, especially when it comes down to changes that you're going to see and feel right away. Mm -hmm. You're really looking yeah. at, at mayors, you're looking at governors, mm -hmm. right? And on the way down, right? So if we're talking about the best way to make an institute change, I'm talking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, make change immediately and to feel it and to uh -huh. see communities change, man. I, I really feel like the emphasizing the local engagement um, and, and voting, getting young folk registered to vote and so forth um, is probably as important as not more. Mm -hmm. Well, there you have it, folks. <laughs> Trump's comments on black America. See y'all on the next one.